Today I'm going to peel back the curtain on the true cost of living right here in this Gulf Side Haven that is Fort Walton Beach. And spoiler alert, it is a lot cheaper to live here in paradise than you might think. Whether or not you're thinking about moving to this area or just kind of you know, throwing the feelers out there just to kind of see if you could live in a coastal paradise like Fort Walton Beach. There's a lot of things to take into consideration. The pros and cons of living there, which we do a lot on this channel. The cost of living, as well as like what your overall lifestyle is going to look like. So in today's video, we're going to peel back the curtains, like I said, on the cost of living here in Fort Walton Beach. And we're really going to break this down. So this is not going to be a super quick video. I'm going to break down actual costs of the main tenants of living in Fort Walton Beach. Beach. And if you're thinking about moving to a city that's nearby Fort Walton Beach, this is going to be true for a lot of the nearby cities as well. Although it won't be perfectly accurate, it will be very, very close. So when we're looking at uh, cost of living, uh, the first place I like to start is these cost of living calculators or these websites that spend a lot of money trying to figure out what the overall cost of living is. And according to one of those websites, livingcost.org, it states that a one person household should cost around $2,067 per month in order to live here. Whereas a family of four will be about $5,113. Now, when I look at these two numbers, I think it's probably not all that accurate. 2,000 seems a little bit low for a single person and $5,113 definitely seems high for a family of four, just depending on how you'd like to live. So let's go ahead and break this down. Number one, by probably your biggest expense that you will have whenever you're moving, your housing costs, whether you're looking at purchasing or renting, we're going to go over both of those numbers. So let's go ahead and start with the sale portion. So if you're going to move down here to purchase, this is kind of what you can expect. As of January of 2024, the median home price that is sold in the last 30 days is $360,000, which has actually been creeping up. It was $345,000 just a couple months ago. So what are your options at the $360,000 range? Is this going to be enough for my family if I'm moving? Well, it kind of depends on what you're looking for. We have several different options in the, call it $20,000 plus or minus. I wanted to keep it as average as possible so that you kind of can understand the scope. You can obviously get a lot cheaper. You can definitely get a lot more expensive. We are a beach town after all. So for those of you that are going to be moving with a small group, you know, small tribe, you and your spouse or just solo, you can get a condo on the water for that 360K range. And again, this is plus or minus 20,000. So these are two bed, two bath condos, and you're not going to have a direct gulf view. That's one of the biggest things at 360,000, give or take, you're not going to start seeing those. You're going to get partial views. You're going to get, you know, walkouts where you're on the first floor, which for some people are not desirable for others. They really are desirable, but it's not going to be a direct gulf view, but you can get on a complex that does have a direct gulf view and have a, has a lot of beach frontage itself. Now for single family homes that are generally going to be the majority of you guys, it kind of ranged all over the place, but for the most part, they were a three bed, two bathroom home with a two car garage landing somewhere in the 1300 to 1900 square feet, fully upgraded. Same with the condos. Condos were also upgraded. I think I forgot to mention that, but it is upgraded. Now, as you start going higher in that square footage, the upgrades start going a little bit lower because you're paying for more, more, you know, footprint than you are the actual home. So the 13, 14, 1500 square foot homes are upgraded to the teeth. The 18 and 1900 square foot homes in this price range are not, but they're not dated either. And out of all of the properties that I looked at over the last 30 days that have sold, there was even one with a pool at this price range. But I do want to warn you that is going to be very, very rare. You'll generally start seeing pool homes creep in at about the 400,000 mark and a little bit above. And then of course, once you get into the half a million and up, they're going to be fairly common. Okay, so that's purchasing, but maybe I don't want to purchase yet. Maybe I want to move down there and just figure out what life is going to be like before I do that. So let's talk some rental numbers. So again, we're going with the median, which is taking out the, you know, the, the big outliers on either side. So you can definitely go cheaper and the sky's the limit on price above this. But the average rental price last month was 1.8 thousand per month. So $1,800 per month. Now this doesn't get you near as big of a house as purchasing. As you can probably imagine when I'm looking at the different rentals that happened in this price range, I went plus or minus $50 just to kind of give us a good outlook. So $1,750 to $1,850. Here's what we found. We found multiple townhomes that were two bed and three bath. Some had a one car garage. Others had no garage. 
We also found a few two bed, two baths, and even some two bed, one baths in that price range. Now, if you don't wanna share a wall with your neighbors, you can go with the single family option, which we do have in this price point. In fact, this is going to be a big chunk of the rentals that we have because again, this is the median. So with this median, you're gonna get a three bed, two bath home, somewhere around 1,200 to 1,600 square feet. So very similar to the purchase options, just a little bit smaller, not as upgraded. And you're gonna lose some garage space. There were only a couple that rented out in this price point that had a two car garage. The rest were either one car, a carport, or nothing at all. And as you would probably expect, you're not gonna get a pool in this price range. You are going to have to exceed that number, probably closer to the 25 to 2800 if I had to take a guess, but I did not look that up before this video. And that is going to be the biggest driver of your costs whenever you're moving somewhere is housing. And that's why we like to start there. And also because I'm a real estate agent. So speaking of prices, if you are thinking about moving to this area, we are real estate agents first. That is what we do. We've got a specialist for you in every single city in the area from Pensacola to Panama City Beach and of course everything in between. So if you are thinking about moving to this area, you can always give us a call, text, email. All of my information is up on the screen so you can pause this, take a screenshot, call me later or just call us now. Okay, now that we have the shameless plug out of the way, let's talk about some utilities because everything that I just mentioned was purely just the mortgage taxes and insurance or your rental costs. This wasn't including any housing utilities. So utilities are gonna range wildly, just depending on how much you use the house. I say wildly, plus or minus 100, 150 bucks. The size of the home, how many people you have in the home, how long of showers you guys take, what kind of electricity you guys keep on, how cold, or warm you like it in your house is also going to make a big difference, especially in the summertime. So when I talk about the big three utilities here, I'm gonna kind of lump them into one instead of breaking them down for you. So this is gonna be your electric, your heating and air, and your water bills. They are generally going to hover around $150 a month for a single person, and then around $250 to $300 for a family. Now we have members on this team that have a five person family where their bills are lower than that, and we also have people that have a four and five person family that their bills are above that. So again, it does vary. Now, internet is going to be around $100 per month, depending on what you get. You can get it as low as $35 a month is what I've seen, realistically like 50 because the $35 option is not super great. So call it $50 a month all the way up to maybe $150 or even $200 if you're really looking for like that gaming speed or you've got you know eight people that are going to be on different devices all the time and you want to make sure that your stuff doesn't slow down. Now, we did just get fiber here in this area. So those of you that you know, know what fiber is all about, so supposedly faster, we haven't tried it yet, but that has come in and there are some pretty great discounts going on for the last several months. And I imagine they're going to be going on for at least another year or so, but that's just a guess. So you can get some fiber for fairly inexpensive. In fact, I think we just had a mailer piece come in for like $40 a month for fiber for this office. Okay, so those are the main utilities for your home. What about getting around? So gas. When it comes to gas, we are currently sitting at about $2.80 per gallon. And that is creeping up as we're getting a little bit closer to summer. This is normally what happens. I just saw on the way in today that there was one at like $3.07. So some of them are creeping up a little bit. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Definitely lower than most because we are a coastal city. Generally, the closer you are to water, in most cases, the cheaper gas it normally is. I am also going to mention some other travel costs later. I don't wanna hit that right now because there's a little bit I wanna talk about in there. So just bear with me on uh, travel costs. That's coming up, so stick around for that. Next up is meals out. We all love eating. We all love you know, going out for lunch on a random Friday at the office or maybe a dinner with your loved one um, You know, out on the town, whatever, a couple of drinks. So let's talk about those prices. So if you decide to take a little lunch break throughout the workday, you can expect that to fall between $12 and $14 most of the time. Again, you can go on either side of that number pretty easily for lunch. Dinner for two, including a couple of drinks with you and your spouse or whoever you're taking out, is generally going to fall around the $70 mark. Now, of course, you can go a lot higher if you decide to go out and get crab legs or great seafood or something. And then, of course, you can obviously go lower. Fast food is going to fall around the 10 to $11 range, so you might as well go out someplace nice for lunch. And if you decide to get a beer, for the most part, it's around 5 or $6. 
Um, and we've got a lot of local brews out here. We've got some breweries. We've got some local, uh, well, I guess local breweries. We've got them all over. So uh, you can get a great local brew for a fairly inexpensive cost. And of course, if you drink um, imports, I think it's what it's called, like Bud Light and Coors Light, stuff like that, it's obviously going to be a heck of a lot cheaper than that. Generally around 2 to $3 a beer. But if drinking beer isn't your thing and you'd rather have a delicious cup of joe, you can expect that to be around 4 to $6 at most of our local shops. So that's going out to eat. Now let's talk about some groceries that you might be purchasing here. Now, again, this is going to vary widely depending on your eating style and the types of food that you like to eat. For me, for instance, I am a single household and I generally spend about $150 a week and that's because I buy organic and you know it's a lot of fruits and veggies. I stay out of the middle aisle for the most part. So mine is a little bit higher than most people's. Now, it would actually be even higher than that if I didn't eat out a couple of times a week. I am confident that number would go up, but I spend around $600 a month, but that's definitely not what the average is. According to Numbio.com, which is one of the sites I like to look at to kind of get a good idea on averages, they say expect around $450 to $500 per person. And of course, you can jump that up a little bit if you've got some teenagers because, well, they're like Hoover vacuums and they just eat everything in sight. But you can expect, like I said, around four to $500 per person. If you're a thrifty shopper, you can most definitely get that down quite a bit. I did go to a local grocery store and check on prices so that I can give you guys a realistic number on some of the most common food items that are purchased. So we're gonna throw those up on screen so that you can kind of follow along and let's get into it. So when we're looking at milk, we are currently sitting at about $3 per gallon. We've got bread at about $2 to $3 per loaf, rice around $1.25 per pound. Um, eggs, I know eggs are a really big hot topic right now. Um, they're not really that expensive right now. If you eat uh, just normal run-of-the-mill eggs, they're about $3 a carton. And if you eat organic, uh, I spent about $4.07 on the 12-pack that I purchased. I actually purchased them in the 18 or 24-packs now, but that's beside the point. Fresh chicken breast is going to fall somewhere between $2.50 and $3 a pound, whereas organic is going to go up to about $5 to $6 per pound. Bananas are going to fall at around $0.50 to $0.60 cents a pound and organic around $0.70 cents per pound. And lastly, for those potato lovers out there, it's going to fall around the same kind of price point as the organic bananas at around $0.75 cents per pound. And that's just to kind of give you a rough idea. So now that I'm done rambling on in different random prices, let's continue. I want to talk a little bit about some random family costs, ones that we haven't put in videos in the past because, well, I don't have a family, so a lot of times I don't think about this stuff and I didn't realize how expensive some of this stuff is. Let's start with daycare. Daycare is generally somewhere around $700 to $900 per child. This is going to include food, but this is a pretty big expense. But as I learned from online, this actually isn't that bad compared to most cities in America. So cool on that. And if you have older kids that are in sports like lacrosse or volleyball or any number of sports that might be out there, those are just two that are in my head because some of our agents on the team have kids in those sports, you can expect about eight to $900 per year in costs for stuff. Now, this is not going to include travel costs, and that's where it starts getting pretty expensive if you're driving out to Mobile and Pensacola and you know Panama City and just going all over the place an hour here to there, and some of the longer trips are two to three hours driving. And a lot of times you're going to have to buy a hotel if you want to stay there and uh, stay the night after the game. So that is definitely going to incur a little bit of expense if you're there. Now, there are cost-effective options. I don't want to just leave you guys with that big number because the city of Fort Walton Beach has youth leagues that start at $30 for Fort Walton Beach residents and $50 for non-residents. So if you live in one of the neighboring towns, you can always come in for that. So that is a heck of a lot cheaper. Now, I don't know what additional costs are incurred for that because everybody on you know this real estate team here has their kids in like school sports. So I don't know what the city is. I'm sure there are extra costs above that, but $30 versus $800 to $900 seems fairly reasonable. Okay, now bear with me on some of the not as much fun stuff. These are very, very important, so I do want to talk about them, and that's taxes. So there are two main taxes that I want to discuss. I've already calculated the taxes in the housing purchase portion, so if you're worried about housing taxes, that was already calculated in all of that number. So this is sales tax and income tax. Our sales tax here in Okaloosa County, which is where Fort Walton Beach is located, currently sits at 7%. Statewide sales tax is 6% and Okaloosa County incurs a 1% tax. So that's where you get the 7%. 
Most states in the country fall in the 5 to 7% range just for state tax. That's not including county or city that might be tacking on top of that. Now, income tax. I love talking about income tax because this wasn't something that I thought of when I moved here. It literally didn't cross my mind. In fact, I stayed a resident of another state, paid taxes to them year over year when I realized I could have gone to Florida for a 0% uh, income tax. Zero. Now, they do tax corporations, but zero on income. So that is already basically a raise. A lot of states have a pretty high income tax bracket for the state alone, and that takes away. You're, you're going to have to pay Uncle Sam either way. I don't think there's any place in the country you can get away from that that I'm aware of, unless you know one of the little islands or Puerto Rico or something like that. I know they've got kind of unique rules. But if you're living in the lower 48, you're going to have to pay Uncle Sam, but you don't necessarily need to pay for the state. Now, we're very fortunate here in Florida. The reason why we don't have any income state tax is because of our tourists. So if you've ever come here to visit, we really, 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 really thank you. And if you'd like to benefit from that, just move down here and become a resident and you won't have to pay that either. Speaking of thanking tourists, I want to thank all of our returning subscribers. If you have watched another video of mine and have come back, I really, really appreciate you. That's awesome. If you're brand new and you've made it this far, you got some sort of value out of this. So I would urge you to scroll down, just hit the pause button real quick. I'll wait for you and scroll down and hit the subscribe button and then tickle that little bell that comes up. It's just going to pop up a little bell. Hit that so that you'll be notified every single time I do a new video. We do videos from Pensacola to Panama City and everything in between, basically giving you information information on what it's like to live here from cost of living pros and cons to actually showing you guys properties and what they cost and how to get through the process. Okay, let's talk about a mega expense for a lot of people. Healthcare. This is something that I am so fortunate I don't have to deal with because I am covered through the military, through the VA. Uh, but I know healthcare costs hurt a lot of family or at least put a dent in the income of a lot of families. So let's talk about that. According to bestplaces.net, a great reputable website I use to kind of average out and compare to other cities, we've got Fort Walton Beach sitting at 5% less than the nation's average, which is awesome. And this is primarily due to the fact that we have more physicians per capita. So we have around 232 um, physicians or healthcare professionals for every 100,000 people. Whereas most cities and states have around the two to 210 physician per 100,000. And the average for healthcare costs is around $467 per person and around $1,900 for a family of four if you don't have any sort of benefits or advantages to knocking those numbers down. And I'm going to be completely honest, I don't know anybody that's paying those kind of numbers, so I'm not 100% sure where these websites get these numbers from. Generally, when I speak to somebody, they give me much, much lower numbers than what I'm hearing here. So I've just got to go with the data here because I don't have any direct experience with that. So please do your research just to make sure. Okay, now talking about some extra flights and travel costs that we didn't really talk about. First and foremost, our commute time here is much lower than most places in the country. The average commute time for Fort Walton Beach residents is 19 minutes, whereas the national average is about 26, 27 minutes. So we save a little bit of time there. If you are working and living in Fort Walton, the commute's gonna be way less than that. You can get on either side of Fort Walton Beach in eight minutes flat um, by hitting the main roads. Even if you're tucked away in a neighborhood, it's fairly quick. So that's gonna cut down on commute time, cut down on some of those gas, uh, gas expenses as well. Now, when it comes to flying out for those of you that want to go to some of the big cities or you've got family that's nearby, because, well, let's be honest, a lot of the people that move here to Fort Walton Beach, they're doing it and they're moving away from everybody they know. So a lot of people like to fly back and forth pretty often. That is one of the biggest benefits of Fort Walton Beach. So we've got the VPS Airport, which is named Fort Walton Beach Destin which is a weird name for it because it's right between Fort Walton Beach and Niceville. It's nowhere near Destin. In fact, there's a whole body of water in between it, but I think they did it for the name recognition. The cool thing about the Fort Walton Beach Destin Airport is that it is, last time I heard, the second fastest growing um, uh, airport in, uh, in Florida. So it gives us a lot of benefits. And one thing that I wasn't planning on talking about, but it just popped in my head, is we have one-way flights from several different carriers that are really, really inexpensive. I flew to Las Vegas for $47 one time through Allegiant but you do have to go on their schedule. They only fly out a couple of times a week, so you have to go out and come back on their time, but it's really, really inexpensive and it's nonstop. 
So I went through all of my receipts for 2023 just for this video so that I can give you guys the no kidding actual cost of a flight for all the flights that I took in 2023. So I'm going to put those up here as I read them off. Please forgive my eyes. I'm going to have to look down because I took quite a bit of flights because I do a lot of conferences and speaking to real estate agents and stuff. Um, on top of all of this other stuff that I do. So here we go, uh, $423 to Pittsburgh. Oh, and you know what, before I go into all of these, I wanna emphasize and I wanna make a note here that I don't shop around. I don't use any fancy points. I don't have a cool credit card that saves me a bunch of money. These are raw numbers. Uh, a lot of times I'm booking right off of Expedia or Google Flights. Sometimes I go to the main website, but I'm, there's no discounts. I didn't do a lot of shopping and I generally only book my flights about a month out. So please keep that in mind that these numbers are going to be higher if, or, or these numbers are going to be much lower if you're a little bit more savvy of a flight shopper. So $423 to fly to Pittsburgh. Um, I had three flights to Dallas last year. It's a very popular place for, uh, for conferences. And they were at 412, 243, and $351. These are all round trip, of course. $806 for Nashville. That was a last minute ticket. So it was a little bit pricier. And then um, the rest of these were first class tickets. So $715 first class to Miami, $1,200 first class to Phoenix, $472 first class to Atlanta. That one's always fairly inexpensive because it's literally an hour flight. And then uh, the most expensive one was $1,190 to Cancun. And that one was a little bit of a last minute ticket too. I probably could have gotten that down to about eight or $900. So the point with this is the flights are not overly expensive. So if you are planning on traveling back to go see family and come back, um, if you're a little bit more savvy than I am, or you've got a lot of flight points, you can knock some of the price off on this. It is definitely going to be a heck of a lot cheaper. That's not to mention the Allegiance and Silver Airline flights that are flying out of both VPS and Pensacola. So you've got the Pensacola airport, if for any reason Valparaiso does, or sorry, the Destin Fort Walton airport doesn't have the flight that you're looking for. You can always head 45 minutes uh, west up the road to Pensacola. The very last thing I want to do here is a cost comparison to some major cities. So I threw a dart at a map like eight times and came up with several different cities to compare this to. And then I looked them up online just to give us a kind of good idea on what it costs to live here versus other cities. And the results were so shocking. Check this out. San Francisco was almost twice as expensive. I know you're probably watching this going, well, duh, San Francisco is expensive. It is notoriously known for that. But it's 93.2% more expensive to live there in every category than here. And I mean, not every category is exactly 93.2, but you know what I mean. Washington DC was 51 and a half time or 51.8% uh, higher. Miami, for those of you thinking, hey, maybe I'll like pop into a different area of Florida, I'll go to Miami or any of those big cities. And that was 22% more expensive. Luckily, it's still in Florida, so it's still cheaper than most major cities, um, but definitely a lot cheaper in Fort Walton than it is in Orlando. Boston, Massachusetts is sitting at 59.8% more expensive. New York, 83.7%. And Dallas, because I actually thought Dallas was going to be fairly comparable because everybody always talks about how inexpensive it is to live in uh, Texas, especially with all the new construction and how cheap it is because, you know, the, the price, you know, there's so much more competition. Anyway, 13.7% more expensive. So bottom line here is it's not that expensive to live right here on Paradise. So if you're looking for the powder white sands, you're looking for these beautiful emerald green waters, a great camaraderie we have, and then all the things we talk about on this channel, you can do this for a heck of a lot less than you're thinking. Now, there are gonna be some people out there that are living in a rural area or you know someplace that I didn't mention here where it's even cheaper, I understand, but please keep in mind, we're not comparing apples to apples in most cases. This is a beach town. We have literally the entire city is on the water. The whole city is on the water. Every inch of Fort Walton Beach well, not every inch, but you know, the entire side of the city is sitting on the water. So it is a little bit different there. So the last thing I have for you guys is an ask. I would like to ask you to comment down below on what your most shocking piece of thing that I mentioned in this video. Like for me, it was the difference between these major cities and us. Like I knew we were cheaper. I looked around before I decided to stay here. A military moved me here and stuff like that. I knew that it was cheaper here because I looked at these different cities. I didn't know how much cheaper it was to live here. And it's cheaper and it's got, in my personal opinion, way better vibes, still has great things to do and has this amazing beach that I get to go see every, I literally drive by this beach every single day. My house 
is less than an eighth of a mile to the water. Like it is insane that I can do that and still be living in, you know, a home that didn't cost me a million bucks. It wasn't even a third of that, just saying. So comment down below what your most shocking piece of advice is. And I really thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.